another week, another Ask SP. No time to waste. Let's begin barreling through this beguiling bunch of gaming queries. Starting off with this video from Violet and Felix. Hi, GGSP. We love your show. I'm Violet. And I'm Felix. And our parents won't let us get games that are too expensive. So do you recommend any free games on the Apple Arcade? Thanks. Bye. bye. Oh, thanks, Violet and Felix. So, Apple Arcade isn't actually free. It's a game subscription service. While they currently offer a free one-month trial period, it then requires an ongoing monthly payment. That means you can play all the Apple Arcade games without paying for them individually. It's all covered by the subscription. And there are some good games on there. I love the road planning sim mini motorways. Or the thoughtful puzzler assemble with care. Or you can check out the neon musical motorcycle racer Sayonara Wild Hearts. Or pinball with a twist in the pinball wizard. Or the wacky sporting hijinks of What the Golf. Or Cricket Through the Ages. And that's just to name a few. But it's really up to your trusty grown-ups to decide if they think it's worth that monthly cost. But if you're looking for some fun free games for your mobile device, then maybe check out the bopping road crossing of Crossy Road and Disney Crossy Road or the excellent tower defense titles Plants vs Zombies 1 and 2, soon to be joined by Plants vs Zombies 3. Then there's the board game like Armello, strategy game Clash of Clans, or any of the Angry Bird games. And you might like to try Mario Kart Tour, Pokemon Go, or Animal Crossing Pocket Camp for some mobile-style experiences of those well-known gaming series. Although, as we always say, watch out for in-game transactions and ads, especially with free-to-start games. Right, now moving on to another question, and this one comes from Sanduni in Hampton Park, Victoria. Dear GGSP, how do you turn sheep into rainbow sheep in Minecraft? Oh, and if you don't answer, it'll turn you into Minecraft noobs. Mwahahaha! Oh, and Daran do these. Oh, some emoticons for Darren. I better get him on the line. Hello, you've reached Darren. Hey, Darren. Uh, just some emoticons from you, please. Oh, splendid. Mm. Grill. Tears for fears. The love boat. Gotta wear shades. Cyclops. Thanks, Darren. And thanks for your question, Sanduni. Oh, Darren, would you like to do the honours of explaining how you change a sheep into a rainbow sheep in Minecraft? Oh, affirmative! Now, if you want to give Minecraft sheep a Technicolor makeover, if you're playing in survival mode, you'll need an anvil, which can be crafted with three iron blocks and four iron ingots. You'll also need a name tag, which, unless you have cheats enabled, you'll have to find instead of craft. They can be found in chests in dungeons, or nether fortresses, or sometimes through trade, or even fishing. Otherwise, you can just search for them in the inventory if you're playing in creative mode. So, with your anvil, name tag, and a sheep, of course, open the anvil menu, place the name tag into the slot, and then type in Jeb underscore. It will cost you one experience level. Grab the Jeb tag, then simply equip it and approach your sheep. Click on the sheep to name it Jeb and look on in awe as your sheep's fleece cycles through the various colours. <laughs> Alternatively, if you're in creative mode, you can use an anvil to name a spawn egg Jeb underscore as well. These colourful chameleon-like sheep are also known as Jeb sheep or disco sheep. Oh, boogie boogie. I love the nightlife. I like to boogie. <laughs> So groovy! Well, thanks, Dan. Bye! Bye-bye! Right, well, let's now hustle on over to our next question, and it's a video from Jesse. Hi, GGSP. I have two questions for you. Question one. Does the iOS version of Terraria have the Journey's End update? Question two. What is the most dangerous ghost in Luigi's Mansion 3? By the way, do you like my sunglasses? Thanks, Jesse. To answer your first question, unfortunately, the iOS version of Terraria does not currently have the Journey's End update. According to the Terraria website, Journey's End is being evaluated for possible porting to mobile devices, but there's no timetable for a release yet. So who knows if or when it might actually happen? And the same goes for the current generation of consoles. As for the most dangerous ghost in Luigi's Mansion 3? Well, 
depends on a few things. The hammer ghosts generally have solid HP, for example, but some ghosts just have pesky abilities, like the slinkers that seem to come out of nowhere and can use Toad as a shield. Oh, dastardly. The multiplayer scare scraper mode also has rare versions of ghosts that can have other abilities, like health regeneration or bombs they can throw, which can be pretty menacing. At least you can take these on with friends. But if we're talking about boss fights in story mode, well, I found my main challenge was more in managing the timing and controls, rather than the ghosts being that dangerous themselves. For example, the fight with Clem in the boiler works is pretty tricky, but it's mostly due to having to maneuver yourself around that pool of water using the poltergust. As for my thoughts on your sunglasses, Jesse, those are some sweet shades. Very cool. But that's all the time we have for Ask SP this week. If you've got a question you'd like to ask us, then go here and send it in. And make it a video question, and if it ends up on the show, we'll send you some cool GGSP loot. So much coolness. You know, it's making me want to pop on my own sweet shades. Check this out. Clip. They clip on sunglasses. How cool is that?